Hello, and welcome to my third episode of my Big Four Thrash Metal series. The Big Four Thrash Metal Part 3. Alright, I've been uh, wanting to make this video for a long time now. And, you know, I previously talked about the debut albums of, uh, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, and Megadeth, the Big Four Thrash. And I uh, also took a look at their sophomore albums. Um, so I ranked them, gave them a miniature review, um, and also explained what those albums meant to me. Um, <clears throat> I think these videos are honestly some of my best work, if I do say so myself. And, you know, I noticed they haven't got quite as many views or likes as some of my other videos. Um, I think a lot of people found my channel through, you know, their mutual love of horror. And uh, not all horror fans are metalheads, as it turns out. You know, I always kind of thought horror and metal kind of went together, but yeah, that's just me. Um, but anyway, check out this vid those videos um, if you haven't already, and I'll go ahead and recap my ranking for the first and second albums from these four bands. Um, yeah, just to summarize, uh, I ranked the debut albums in this order. I went Kill 'Em All, then Show No Mercy, then Fistful of Metal, then Killing Is My Business. Um, yeah, all great albums, and you know, it's just I don't prefer one way over the other. That's just the order I rank them in. Um, yeah, then the sophomore records, it went uh, Ride the Lightning, then Among the Living, then Peace Sells, then Hell Awaits. Again, all great albums, and, you know, just because Hell Awaits is my least favorite does not mean it's not an excellent album or one of my favorites by any means. Um, you know what, those albums all come really close anyway, and my ranking may have actually changed somewhat since then, but, you know, it's not really about the ranking, it's just about talking about the actual albums. Uh, <laughs> I just do that as kind of a extra thing, I guess. So, you know, for more info on that, check out those other two videos. Uh, Big Four Thrash Metal <coughs> Parts 1 and 2. Uh, yeah, this time I'll rank the albums again, uh, but I want to focus more on just talking about what makes each recording um, so great. Not necessarily why I prefer one to another, so don't concentrate too hard on the order I have them in, because that's not really what's important here. Uh, this should make for an interesting discussion, though, because the third albums from these bands are often considered, uh, well, three of these bands anyway, are often considered by most metalheads as each band's finest hour, uh, the exception being Megadeth, as it was their fourth album, Rust in Peace, that is usually considered their best work, and rightfully so. Alright, so let's get started. Um, <clears throat> first, let's take a look at Master of Puppets by Metallica. Um, and yes, this is my favorite of the big four third albums. Uh, Metallica does win again, I apologize, uh, for the third time in a row, just like the last two videos. Um, no, I mean, no one, no one can mess with, uh, with uh, them back then. They were just incredible in the 80s. Um, but, you know, honestly, this is the last time that uh, James and Lars and company would beat out the other bands. Uh, because when it comes to the fourth, fifth, and uh, sixth, and so on albums from all the big four bands, um, I think the other bands put out stronger releases. So, so yeah, Metallica wins for the final time. Uh, but boy, is it justified. Uh, Master Puppets is a masterpiece. Um, this is the favorite album of many metalheads, you know, the benchmark of Metallica. And I can see why, even though I do slightly prefer the first two records, uh, but only by a little bit, as this CD is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, you know, whereas Ride the Lightning had more epic and dynamic song structure, um, uh, Master Puppets... Uh, it kind of takes a new approach, uh, with a somewhat more uh, melodic and refined sound. Um, yeah, better production, too. You know, uh, Don't get me wrong, um, the bruising thrash madness is still there, and then some. Um, you know, the opener, Battery, which is one of the most mineral riffs I've ever heard, uh, a bit reminiscent of Fight Fire with Fire from the last album, is easily one of the heaviest and fastest tracks found here. Uh, I remember riding on the bus on the way to school with this kick-ass song blaring from my headphones all those years ago. Uh, this CD was frequently in my Walkman back then. Um, and next is the title track, which, you know, is one of the most well-known metal songs this side of Black Sabbath's Paranoid. It's just so iconic and so unforgettable, it'll likely be stuck in your head for years, with its many different and varied arrangements and patterns. Um, you know, it even features some lead guitar playing by James Hetfield. Yeah, he plays some solos on this album. Um, yeah, the thing that should not be um, in Welcome Home Sanitarium continue this miraculous and righteous streak with uh, Disposable Heroes being a very heartfelt and moving tune, features something, some of uh, Hetfield's more poetic and woeful lyrics. Uh, and it's also one of Lars Ulrich's, uh, well, it's probably by far his best drumming performance, really. Um, you know, and you can tell he really worked hard on this song. <sighs> um, yeah, the, you know, the, the drum fill he does, you know, right after the second chorus and before the breakdown and solo is just breathtaking. Um... <clears throat> But, uh, yeah. Um, 
Orion is a beautifully written and spaced out instrumental, which features some ex- excellent bass work from Cliff Burton, who uh, co-wrote this song. Uh, yeah, sadly, this was Cliff's last performance as he was tragically c- killed uh, shortly after the release of this album. And in my opinion, the whole band, the whole band kind of died after that because they never really fully recovered from this fatal blow and would never release something this magnificent ever again. You know, such a shame. But you know. Yeah, rest in peace, Cliff Burton. Uh, the last song here is Damage Inc., a very catchy and uh, fast-paced tune, which will surely make you bang your head uncontrollably. Um, it features a great solo from Kirk Hammett as well. Um, you know, he, he was really on his game with his guitar playing here. You know, all the players are top-notch, though, for that matter. Uh, with James Hetfield getting, giving what I consider his truly last great metal vocal performance. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, uh, Master of Puppets is a must own for every metal fan, and I should probably give it its own video someday, despite the lengthy uh, review that I just did, um, you know, so, yeah, this could have been a Master of Puppets video, but anyway, all right, moving on, um, next is obviously Slayer's Rain and Blood, uh, which is my, <laughs> uh, which is my second favorite of the third albums from these uh, four thrash metal acts, and the, I don't even think I need to explain why, uh, but I will anyway. You know, this al- album freaking slays, and destroys everything in its path with its sheer unrelenting brutality, from the vicious opening Angel of Death all the way through to the epic finale, Raining Blood. Um, this is by far the heaviest and most aggressive of these al- four albums. Uh, you know, this was back when bassist vocalist Tom Mariah was truly the voice of hell. And, uh, you know, he said it's so evil and so demonic here, but also hitting some truly remarkable Halford-esque high notes here and there. You know, um, <laughs> I can't seem to get the camera angle right. Um, yeah, you know, Tom, Tom Mariah, uh, you know, his bass playing was never really the highlight of Slayer's sound, and, you know, you probably won't see him on too many top bassists lists. Uh, but he gets the job done, and, um, you know, keeps the rhythm in a competent and adequate fashion, um, Dave Lombardo's drumming is incredible, as always. His beats are top-notch here, and he's my favorite drummer for good reason, you know. Such an innovative style that really stands out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame he's no longer with the band, but, you know, what can you do? Um, yeah, guitarists Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman, rest in peace, um, are on their game as usual, with some highly creative and memorable riffs that are easily some of their best work. Um, the solos are breathtaking as well. As always, especially Hanneman's, um, you know, and a lot of people criticize Kerry King for his, his somewhat sloppy and kind of unbalanced solos that consist of way too much uh, whammy bar and aren't like quite as structured. Uh, but I personally love it. You know, it, it's it's become a staple of Slayer's sound. You know, I think they go well with Hanneman's slightly more technical and precise shredding. Um, you know, this record is just savage. You know, with um. You know, with, with tracks like Necrophobic, uh, Altar of Sacrifice, and Postmortem being some of the highlights, uh, even though all the songs are fantastic, uh, you know, the only complaint I have is that they're not long enough. You know, I guarantee that any time you hear that haunting drum beat and insane guitar riff from the, well, almost title track, you know, <laughs> Raining Blood, Rain in Blood, uh, you get chills every time, no matter how many times you've heard it. Um, Rain in Blood truly rains. Fuck yeah, Long Live Slayer. They're my favorite thrash metal band, because they stayed co- so consistent over the years. They're my favorite thrash act overall. Alright, well, next is Among the Living by Anthrax, uh, my third favorite of these albums, and what many consider the pinnacle of their career. Um, you know, I kind of slightly prefer Spreading the Disease and Persistence of Time, but Among the Living is still some of their best work, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's likely the definitive album. Um, you know, certainly one of the best thrash albums ever made. Um, this is the first record I ever heard from the band and was immediately hooked. Um, songs like the title track, uh, Cotton of Mosh, I'm the Law, NFL, Indians, Imitation of Life, and even more being essential thrash albums that every metalhead should have memorized note for note. Um, you know, Anthrax always took a more humorous and colorful approach to their songwriting, you know, with fun and amusing riffs and lyrics. Uh, hell, I'm the Law is written about the comic book character Judge Dredd. Uh, how freaking cool is that? You know, um, I've said it before, and I'll continue, I'll continue to say it forever. Uh, Joey Belladonna is, uh, there he is. Joey Belladonna 
is not only the best vocalist out of these four bands, but is by far my favorite thrash vocalist ever. Right up there with Chuck Billy and Bobby Blitz. Uh, Joey, Joey's melodic, clean singing and high notes are incredible, and surprisingly fit well for thrash, you know? Um, you know, it was usually... You know, thrash usually consists of, uh, like, more harsh and aggressive singing, so, uh, you know, Joey's uh, very unique in, in that respect, and he's very underrated. Um, you know, the guitar work from lead player Dan Spitz and rhythm player and band leader Scott Ian shine here as well, with some very memorable solos and riffs to be found on this album. Uh, Anthrax probably does have my least favorite guitar playing out of these four bands, but that's not to say it isn't still remarkable. I mean, come on, it's just, it's just hard to compare with the likes of, um, Kirk Hammett, Dave Mustaine, Chris Poland, Marty Friedman, and Jeff Hanneman, and even Kerry King. Um, you know, but that's not demeaning the band in any sense. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, Frank Bellow's bass playing and Charlie Benante's drumming make up for a very thrilling and unforgettable rhythm section, and it's a huge part of what makes Among the Living a very solid record. Check it out. It comes highly recommended from me. All right, now, last is So Far, So Good, So What by Megadeth. Uh, which isn't quite as good as the other albums I just talked about, and uh, it's often overlooked due to being sandwiched in between two of the most colossal thrash masterpieces, Peace Cells and Rust in Peace. Uh, <laughs> still, it's a pretty good album in its own right, and is the only Me Megadeth record to feature Jeff Young on lead guitar and Scott Beeler on drums. Uh, not my favorite lineup, but still consistent enough to deliver some memorable tunes like Set the World Afire, In My Darkest Hour, um, Hook in Mouth, and even a cover, cover of uh, Anarchy in the UK by the Sex Pistols. <laughs> um, yeah, not the greatest Megadeth album, uh, but not the worst either. You know, band leader Dan Mustaine. Uh, Dan Mustaine, he still had some good ideas left. Um, you know, some of his stronger lyrics and riffs mixed in here and there. Uh, his guitar playing is great as always. And, uh, you know, I've never really thought his vocals were all that great, but, uh, you know, they fit the band's style um, pretty well. You know, I couldn't really picture anybody else singing from Megadeth. Um, you know, he might be my least favorite vocals of the big four, but then again, I don't know, Tom Araya's yelling on later releases play up there, too. You know, it's, it's hard to say. I did think Dave got a little better over the years, and then sometimes he gave a pretty strong singing performance. You know, it kind of surprises you a little bit. Um, you know, and again, yeah, as I said, I couldn't picture anybody else on vocals for this band, and, um, yeah, and David Lefson's bass playing still delivers as usual, and, um, uh, you know, I'm glad he came back to the band after leaving for, uh, you know, for a few years, you know, and he's almost just important to Megadeth as Mustaine is, at least in my opinion, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still give this record a whirl, um, you won't be too blown away, but you won't be disappointed either, um, Definitely worth checking out. Um, but yeah, all right. Well, guys, um, yeah, check these four albums out. Um, they're excellent. Uh, <laughs> Love the Big Four Thrash, and I and I agree that they are definitely definitely earned their title. A lot of people argue and say that other bands should be there, but, you know, the, these bands were forced to be recorded in the 80s. Hardly anybody could compare. You know, maybe not so much now all the time. You know, their records, they aren't what they once were, but still, they, they were the big four thrash, and probably always will be. Their legacy will never be forgotten. Um, all right, well, that concludes my analysis of the third albums of the each of the big four thrash metal bands. I hope you guys liked it, and, uh, be on the lookout for the next episode in this uh, little limited series, uh, in which I'll be looking at their fourth albums, including the monumental Rust in Peace. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, long live thrash metal. All right, guys, I'm Hellhound, and uh, until next time, I guess uh, next time you see me, I'll probably be reviewing the remaining Child's Play movies that I haven't got to yet, all the Chucky films that haven't got their own reviews. So... Uh, Stay tuned for that, and keep it metal.